Now we pay another visit to Daily Mail Island. For the past year, 12 volunteers have given up their careers, possessions and lives to participate in a social experiment on the remote Welsh island of Clandifno. With a right-wing tabloid as their only source of information, these people make up the inhabitants of Daily Mail Island. Now three months into the project, many of the volunteers have found themselves reassessing their political views. None more so than Bassington Davis and his life partner, Jean Galoshes, who, in their lives before the island, enjoyed a very liberal existence. We have an open relationship. Some people are horrified by this, but it actually keeps us closer together. Now, after 60 days of reading the Daily Mail, the pair have changed beyond all recognition. The way Ali dresses is disgraceful. To be honest, dressing like that, she's practically asking for it. That woman dresses like a whore, a disgusting foreign whore. I thought I could see the top of her left nipple earlier. I had to stand on a chair to be sure. And there it was, absolutely shameful behavior. But worse is to come. On Thursday, Jean catches her 16-year-old daughter, Sarah, Lovely. masturbating. I heard some noises from inside her room. And I walked in, and there she was, just debasing everything with her fingers. Following a crisis meeting, the islanders decide to put Sarah on trial. Bassington appoints himself judge. Sarah Galoshes, you are accused of manipulating your own genitalia in a bid to achieve orgasm. I have to say that this is one of the foulest crimes I have ever encountered during my two-hour tenure as Justice of the Peace. Yet despite the appalling nature of your misdoings, you will be granted a fair trial. Have you anything to say, you filthy little cow? That concludes the case for the defence. Bassington's prosecution requires Sarah to perform a full recreation of the incident in front of the courtroom. Again. Eventually, Sarah is required to submit the evidence six times before the jury is satisfied. I think we all, I think everybody wanted to be absolutely certain what had taken place in order that we could decide precisely how to punish the girl. It uh, wasn't an easy spectacle to sit through by any means. Indeed, I know Des had to make his excuses and run to the lavatory at least three times. Foreman of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have. How do you find the dirty little wretch? Guilty. Sarah Galoshes, you have committed a wicked act, a wicked act that can only be rectified by the imposition of another wickeder act. And it is with this in mind that I impose a sentence befitting your monstrous crime. Uh, take her down. Bye, love. Yes, bye, love. You have to clamp down on this kind of thing because it spreads, you see. I'll be keeping a close eye on Ali, just in case she starts trying any of this masturbating business. I've taken the precaution of drilling a spy hole in her bedroom wall. So rest assured, if she does start caressing her own sex in the middle of the night, the eyes of justice will be watching. You're watching TV Go Home. Now, the fascinating televisual experiment, Daily Mail Island. For the past year, 12 volunteers have given up their careers, possessions and lives to participate in a social experiment on the remote Welsh island of Clandifno. With a right-wing tabloid as their only source of information, these people make up the inhabitants of Daily Mail Island. Before arriving on the island, Des Pliers was the only participant to actually read the Daily Mail. Des felt this familiarity would serve him well. Well, I think some people are going to find it very difficult to cope. Um, they may have just skimmed a copy that they picked up on a train, but um, I've been reading the mail every day, cover to cover, for 15 years. Uh, 
Uh, I love Nigel Dempster, uh, the big colour picks of the Royals, the endless rhetorical questions. Um, take today's, for example. Um, as the Yorkshire Rastafarian Society are granted lottery money to erect a 40-foot high statue of Marcus Garvey, can we be certain our children won't be potheads by noon? See, I can take that kind of thing on the chin, but I'm not sure how some of the others will cope. But after 120 days on the island, Des is showing signs of strain. At first, he, he seemed so at home here. He was everything you'd expect a Daily Mohawk to be. He was patriotic, reactionary, um, patronising and, and opinionated. But, but then he got really into Fred Bassett. Oh, very good. <laughs> I think he never really had time for the cartoons page at home, but for the past three months, it's all he's read. Now it's Fred Bassett this, Fred Bassett that. And I think his behaviour, to be honest, is really starting to freak people out. Two weeks ago, the Islanders made nettle punch and held a disco. At the dance, Des's fascination with Fred was clearly on display. Hello, Des. Oh, a party. Des? Lots of music, lots of booze. Is he all right? And in the morning, lots of headaches. His obsession with the Rye cartoon dog even began to permeate council meetings. They don't need rehousing, they need hanging. So Somebody lost at golf this morning. In desperation, the Islanders arrange a court hearing to decide Des's fate. After a six-hour trial, he's sentenced to a stoning on the beach. And there you will be brutally beaten until the Basset Hound is banished from your body. Do you have anything to say, Des? The last time I saw that look, Someone had broken the greenhouse window.